Hey everyone, welcome back to The Nature Patch. I thought I would start the first video in this flower farming series, I suppose. I'm not too sure whether I want to like name them episodes or not, but I will put them all into one playlist. Um, and I thought I would share with you what I'm up to today. It's Sunday and I am just getting my life sorted, including getting my seed stash sorted. And I try and make the most of getting all of these jobs done while the weather is bad outside because it is just so windy. Um, but I am going to be starting some seeds today. I'll brave the wind a bit later on. And I just thought I would share the reality of what's happening right now. I, you can't see me, but I literally have seeds everywhere. Uh, and I'm going through my seed stash and trying to figure out where my flowers are because don't judge me because I know you're all the same maybe but I keep my seeds just in a massive big container and yeah I'm probably a bit of a seed hoarder but one of the main things that I'm trying to do with just trialing out a flower farm is just using up a lot of the seeds that I do have and he's also going to be joining me she's such a little sweetheart and I know a lot of you really love cats so they'll make some appearances throughout these videos but she's just sleeping she's having a snooze and our other cat is uh he wants to go outside so he's uh yelling and meowing at us so basically what i'm doing is i'm going through all of my seed stash and finding where my flowers are because i have ordered some over the past few weeks and i have just been throwing them into a pile because a lot of them are flowers that are not yet planting i'm planting them when it starts to warm up in spring and summer so I'm just going to try and organize them into piles of cool flowers and warm flowers. And cool flowers is something that I just wanted to touch on that I heard about Noble Flowers were talking about it. Phaedra from Noble Flowers mentioning Lisa Mason Ziegler who talks about cool flowers and she has a book which I definitely need to get. Um, and it's something that I haven't really ever worried about because in the subtropics where I used to live around Brisbane, we could grow flowers all year round. So it didn't really matter. Um, I could just plant flowers whenever I wanted. Cool flowers are flowers that you can plant in autumn and early winter and over winter, and then they will start growing a lot more when the weather warms up. They're plants that can generally handle like a few light frosts and if you do get heavy frosts in the area then it's best to cover them. But the cool flowers that I am just pulling out here, um, I will do a little bit of a tour of what I have planted in this video as well. But some of the ones that I'm going to be planting today, I've just pulled out a few because I, I need to make it manageable or else I get sidetracked and start pulling out like 20 packets of seeds which is not realistic. I have a few leftover snapdragon seeds here. This is a mix. With snapdragons you want to make sure that you're getting the taller variety rather than the short variety um, and these ones here grow to 60 to 90 centimeters tall. I need to use up all of these seeds. Snapdragon packets they come with so many seeds in them which is really great and really good for your money. Um, Rocky what are you doing? Do you want to be in the video? Bit moody. So I'm going to plant those as well as some more fever few. These are, uh, you can overwinter them uh, in areas that don't get really, really heavy frosts. Um, these are definitely frost hardy and I have planted a few of these, um, but we're going to plant another tray and I'm also going to plant some stock. I don't think I have too many more seeds. These are the giant column stock and I don't know how great the germination is with these ones. Again, this is my learning year. I'm just gonna see how they go. And I would like to order some more stock flowers. Um, I'm gonna do some pink surprise calendula. I also just wanna plant some more nemesia for around my cottage garden. You can plant this in autumn and winter and spring if you are in really cool climates but it prefers um, kind of cooler seasons of the year. This is the carnival mixed uh, packet, just got it from Bunnings. I'm just going to dot this around the cottage garden because these germinated really quickly uh, and they seem to not have a lot of bug pressure so that's what I'm looking for. I'm not going to use these for cut flowers but this is just going to be pretty for the garden. 
those are the ones that I'm going to plant today and I'll organize all of these seeds pretty much the rest of them really are ones that are warmer season plants other than the ones I've already planted so I don't need to worry about those right I need to head outside brave the wind and get these seeds planted you want to say hello say hello to everyone say hello this is Rocky he's our little boy because he he still looks like a kitten even though he's almost three but he's just he's a little he's a little cat aren't you yeah I know okay go play So I'm just going to fill one of these trays and plant the seeds of this so then I can propagate out of this and I'm using a mixture of this is a little bit of potting soil and worm castings in here and I'm going to add some uh, seed raising mix and then fill this up and then I'm just going to like section it off with maybe like a piece of string or something to know what's planted where. And then when these grow up and they get like their true leaves and everything, I'll just prick them out and put them into pots. I really do need like a big tub instead of this to be mixing everything because buckets, they just don't really work. going to plant snapdragons first these are really really tiny seeds and they don't really need to be covered because they need light to germinate so I'm just gonna fit as many as I can on one side and then I'll kind of like section it off and also plant some stock on this tray too you see how tiny they are they are so small so I think I have enough to like fill the whole tray with snapdragons I'm just gonna do half, and three quarters. These are pretty old seeds as well, so I'm not too sure on their termination. And we'll see how they go. This is quite a lot again, but we're gonna thin them out. And I am gonna just put a tiny layer of soil over this dock because they need just a little bit. So that's one tray done, and that's pretty much how I am going to be doing these seeds today. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow on golden, golden, golden things. in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow the golden golden it's really cold and I am not awake 
So I thought I would come out this morning and share what I actually have planted for the flower farm so far and also share with you what Scott and I put together yesterday afternoon. My voice is still like really croaky because I'm, I'm not awake right now. <laughs> it is so cold and winter is not kind on my voice. So we're going to go on a little walk and I'm going to share with you my little makeshift greenhouse thing that I put together that Scott and I put together yesterday um, so that our seeds and seedlings can stay a little bit warmer overnight. I still can't get over that. Can you tell I've lived in Queensland for most of my life? But I still find that so amusing that I can see my breath. So this thing here behind me is what Scott and I put together yesterday afternoon and I was inspired by Phaedra and Moroni from Noble Flowers. They own and run a flower farm in Victoria and they did something similar like this before they got some other hothouses slash greenhouses where they pretty much just had a greenhouse on the ground. And I have done this really cheaply because you know I am very frugal and basically what I have done to put this thing together is pretty much just a piece of landscape fabric over the grass to make sure the grass doesn't come up um, and then I can put my seedling trays on that I have stapled it down not with landscape pegs because I don't have any but I have a lot of camping pegs so I use the camping pegs and then I just had some poly pipe that I used to make like a hoop over it and then some builders plastic over the top it was really really cheap to make and the materials that I used, I only pretty much used like a quarter max of the materials. So I still have so more if I want to make some more. But I can see it is very, very toasty in there. So this is going to help with germinating my seedlings because I have zero indoor space to do that uh, at the moment. Our house is not very big and it's not really feasible with cats to be having so much stuff inside. So that's why I'm doing it out here. And this area here gets quite a bit of sun during the day. So any seedlings that I have in there, um, I'm just gonna lift off the top like I am right now and they will be warm enough for the day. We are in a climate that we don't really get heavy frosts here. We're fairly close to the coast. So uh, our growing season is extended a lot more than it is for people indoor, indoor, than it is for people inland. And that's why I feel like it's okay that I have this system outside here because for most of the year I'm not going to be needing something like this um, because it is warm enough for all the seeds to be germinating outside on tables anyway. Right, I'm going to lift it up and I'll show you what this process looks like. It's not very difficult at all. So. I'm also aware that it's like not even that cold and I look like a penguin. I think it's like four, three degrees or something, but, but I am still adjusting my sensitive little body from the subtropics where it does not get very cold at all. <laughs> so that's pretty much all it is. Uh, not that special. Basically, I have in here, I have planted um, what you saw me talk about in the previous clip. I have some stock, some snapdragons, feverfew, nemesia, calendula, and echinacea. These are all cold tolerant plants. They don't mind a little bit of cold. So um, it was quite warm under there and there was quite a bit of condensation, which helps me um, not having to water as much but I will come out here and check on these fairly regularly to make sure that they are okay with moisture, baby them until they're seedlings and I can transplant them out. While I'm down here, I may as well show you where the majority of the flower farm is going to be if you're new to this channel and aren't kind of aware of the layout of our land it's behind this wall of trees here so we'll walk around and i'll share with you yeah how big it's going to be and the general plan for it
And this is why it pays to do regular walks and checks of the land because pretty much everywhere else in the backyard is frost free. But I see a nice little patch in here and like a little kind of little tiny patch over there. And that just shows the difference in the microclimate just of this tiny like five meter square area. Frost hits in really particular places unless you're getting like a really heavy frost. But this is all quite crunchy and icy. And I think that's because it's actually a bit of a dip in here. But it really does pay to know your land um, really well. So the ins and outs of it throughout the whole season. Because, yeah, it's really interesting that there's frost here but nowhere else. So we are about to order in some soil uh, and some compost to finish off some of these beds, but it's going to be bit by bit this area. We have black plastic here that we've had laid down for months and this is going to ensure that we can extend all of these kind of three rows there way out. Then we're just gonna keep moving the plastic down a little bit to that tree. Um, and then we're going to fill in all of this area here with rows. So this is our winter project and I'm going to yeah, take you along with it all. It's looking pretty good underneath the plastic at the moment and it all slopes down that way. So we're doing um, kind of lengthwise rows to make sure that we get um, like really good water retention on the slope. But yeah, this is where the majority of all of the flowers are going to be planted alongside some on this fence here this is a lot of like the native plants planted all down here which i'm going to be picking a lot of foliage from uh, and we do have quite a lot of trees and greenery around that i can also pick from so yeah that is an overview of the flower farm area um, we do have a lot of other garden beds kind of like oh you can see my shadow <laughs> A lot of big garden beds like this one here that we're also going to be picking foliage from but generally this big area here is what we're going to be growing the flowers at. So I'm going to head up to where all the seedlings are and I'll share with you everything else we have planted and then uh, wrap this video up. Just loving life, getting their morning sun, you know, just doing the daily usual morning routine. So in terms of what I have planted, I just have it over on this table here right now. Um, I need some more tables to place these on because putting them on the ground, the bandicoot comes in at night and digs in through all of the little plug trays. So that's definitely not ideal. Oh, actually, another thing I will show you. I got all of these big trays and little punnets like that. I actually picked them all up from the tip. And I got so many trays for $20, I think I paid for them. So many trays, individual punnets, cell pot things, and they're all just stacked up at the tip for sale. So if you're looking for like nursery supplies or pots or things like that, definitely check out um, like, yeah, the rubbish station or the tip because they usually do have quite a lot. So I saved a lot of money on those. And in there I have planted, so, so far I have some yarrow, Billy Buttons, Eryngium or um, Sea Holly. What else I have? I think these, yeah, Aquilegia or Columbine, I think it's what they're called. I'm not sure how they'll go here, but I was interested to try. Uh, Feverfew, and I have a lot of this, which is Swamp Paperbark, or it's kind of like a, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's like a honey myrtle or something like that but it's a native australian plant and the foliage is just stunning and is going to be really really pretty in bouquets i'm hoping it just grows a little faster than it is though i've also got some lupins planted some xanthoria and this is just other veggies i've got some sad looking broccoli and cabbage that desperately needs to go out in the ground uh, lots of coriander because i love coriander i have a whole tray of um what are these again? I'm doing a mind blank, mind blank. Cornflowers. I have pink, red, and blue, and this is my first fail. So here you go, here's me failing at flower farming. <laughs> um, I planted all these from seed and they went super, super leggy, you can see here. 
Uh, and that's because I went away for a day and they all germinated and sprouted up and I had left them inside, inside in the garage um, because it was pouring rain and then they just went super leggy. So I might have to actually just re-sow all those. And, and I also have a um, tray of status too, which needs a little bit of fertilizer because it's going a little bit red. So I need to work on that. And then on this seat over here, because I didn't have enough room on the table, I have a whole tray of more snapdragons that I'm going to plant out into the flower farm and also just into my cottage garden in here. A lot of the plants are actually just going to go in here and around like all of you know the garden borders and also in the flower farm so that so that I can just pack in as many flowers as I can all right I think I might end the video here um, let me know what you would like to see on this journey because I am more than happy to share um, anything I'm going to be ordering a few things over the next few weeks so I'll share kind of what supplies I am getting um, and yeah, how much that is costing and everything like that. Um, and I'll also document when we get the compost delivered, prepping all the beds. And yeah, if you'd also like to see a full kind of list of what I'm growing, I might do a video on that as well and how I'm kind of planning slash designing what I'm growing. Um, I think I might do another vlog on that because it is really difficult and it's been really challenging to kind of narrow it down to a few things because I'm not growing a lot this year. I'm just, yeah, you know, doing like a trial year, but it is just so hard to keep buying seeds and expand my collection when I really, really don't need to. So I'm more than happy to, you know, share how that's going as well. I'm going to go inside, have a cup of coffee, wake up a little bit more and warm up and stop looking like an Antarctic penguin. But I really hope you enjoyed the first episode of this flower farming journey. I can't even really remember what I included in the video, but I hope it was good. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. And until my next one, happy gardening, everyone. Bye. Gold hair, gold hair, gold rings, gold leaves.